Hello everybody, I'm Terry Peterman, the Internet Electrician, and welcome to another one of my video shorts on current topics here at electrical-online.com. Today we're going to talk about what it means to have a broken neutral and the problems that this condition can cause. I've got two examples of, of how this situation came to light this last couple weeks here. One of them was from a question on my fanbook page, on uh, Facebook fanbook page for the Internet Electrician. And Heather wrote to me saying, I'm working on a mobile home furnace and the board has given me a code saying that the neutral and the ground are reversed. And when I check the neutral bar in reference to ground, I have voltage. And should I have voltage on that? Well, from what she told me, I assume now that she's got a broken neutral somewhere in this home and I think it's with the main service because you should not have any voltage from neutral to ground. That's where they're bonded at the main service. That's where the neutral and the ground are bonded together. So there should be zero or very close to zero volts between neutral and ground. So I advised her to call the electrical company, get them to check the source, probably in the neutral connection in the meter base, or it could even be at the transformer, not knowing how this mobile home is fed, but somewhere there's an issue with the neutral. Now having an open neutral like that can cause all kinds of problems, especially with 120 volt appliances that it might be plugged in and connected. And then if you turn on a 240 volt, supplied appliance like a, a range dryer or their hot water heater which incidentally they were all also having trouble with then you can get all kinds of stray voltage floating voltages across 120 volt appliances anywhere from 0 to 240 volts which of course can let the smoke out of any 120 volt appliance if you double the supplied voltage so she dealt with that and I have since talked to her and she said that they found the problem the supply was had a problem with it in the neutral in the meter base as I suspected and that's been fixed. The next situation came up here at the lake uh, where we spend our summers here at Carefree Resort on Glenifer Lake. Had my manager come by one day and knowing that I'm an electrician asked if I could just take a quick look at one of the mobiles here. It was actually an RV, um, a bit of a park model RV which they were running on battery only they'd lost their 120 volt supply and their battery of course was dropping down to six volts and their lights were barely working furnace wouldn't work so I went to check out the situation and looking at the pedestal everything seemed good no signs of heating on their 30 amp 125 volt RV type cord connected situation here everything seemed fine there we're gonna slide in a picture of that pedestal and how it looked breaker wasn't tripped or anything there and those are the things that Dawn had checked as well so then going to her panel, I opened up the panel. The first thing I did was actually check from hot to, to ground. And I did have 120 volts, but nothing was working. That told me again, likely a broken neutral. So I checked from hot to neutral. Sure enough, there's a zero volt there. So zero volt reading. So nothing was working. We shut off the supply and started to hunt for the junction box. Because at the panel, there's a 10-2 solid NMD type of wire feeding the panel and 10-2 with the ground and then feeding the mobile itself was a 10-3 SOW cord so you got hot neutral and ground on a flexible cable and they came in under a bed so I knew there had to be a junction box under there so here's a little picture of the junction box and where it was under the bed and conveniently piled up with with uh, blankets and pillows and all kinds of bedding so I could see right away when I looked at the junction box there was a little black spot coming out of one of the holes in the cover and the box cover I knew right away that the problem was in there so opening up that box what we had was a bad splice that was probably even from the factory if you don't if you're not careful when you twist solid conductors with stranded conductors the moret can push that stranded conductor away from the connection and it might be just connecting with one or two strands or maybe it's just even resting against the the solid conductor and it looks like it's a good splice and it works for a while but as you add heat heat adds resistance and it just snowballs into a burned out connection so you can see by this picture the moret was completely melted off so anyhow we just had to there was enough slack in there that had I not been able to get back to good conductor with no damage on the insulation I would have been able to re-terminate that conductor, that cable, and re-splice this. But as it turned out, there was enough good cable inside that box yet that I could cut it back, re-strip it, make a proper connection. Now when I talk about a proper connection in many of my videos, 
you'll always hear me refer to as the tug test after I've made a splice. What I mean here is, like I said, when if you don't get that those wires nice and even, when you're spinning on that moret, they're going to push one of them out, likely the stranded one. So you want to make sure they're even, you get that moret down tight, firmly tightened up on both conductors, and then the all-important tug test. Pull on each conductor individually out of that moret, and if the wire pops out, you didn't get a good connection. If you can't pull it out, then you've got a darn good connection. Any electrical connection needs to be as mechanically sound and as, a, and as electrically conductive as the original conductor. So what that means is just you should no more be able to pull that spliced connection apart than you would be able to pull a piece of wire apart. So it should be as strong and as, elect and as electrically sound as the original conductor. So that's the story today on broken neutrals and open neutrals and the problems they can cause. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm Terry Peterman, the Internet Electrician at www.electrical-online.com.